Today's story is just evil. I mean evil. So if you can't watch evil, don't watch it. But I advise all my viewers to watch my shows so you can learn from them and be aware of your surroundings. Viewer discretion is advised. In 1989 in Wiltshire, Ohio, the Rogers family, Hal and Joan, both 36 years old, Joan went by Joe, had two daughters, 17-year-old Michelle and 14-year-old Christy. The couple had met in high school and had fallen in love, and during senior year, Joan would get pregnant with Michelle, but that was okay because they were truly in love and right after graduation they got married and moved on to a dairy farm to settle down and start their life. A few years later little Christy would be born. They worked very hard on their farm but it was just not enough to make ends meet so Joan would get a night job at a factory where she drove a forklift and worked assembly line. Hal's brother John also lived with them on the farm in a trailer nearby the house and Hal would discover John was assaulting his older daughter Michelle for the past three years and Michelle didn't tell anyone because John told her if you tell anyone I'm gonna kill you all jokes aside I'm gonna kill you John would go to prison for a very long time but this would destroy Hal, because it was his own brother doing it. Hal and John's mother would side with John and would spread word all over town that Michelle was setting up John. This was truly devastating for the family. So Hal would tell Joan, you guys need a vacation. Take the girls and just go on a vacation. I'll stay back here to watch over things. The girls and Joan were so excited because they'd never been on a vacation before, but they had a very small budget, so they had to plan out things very clear. So on May 26th, 1989, they would drive to Florida and start their vacation. They were simply just having an amazing time. They went everywhere, zoos, parks, you name it. And on May 29th, Joe would send a, a postcard to Hal telling him, the girls are dragging me all over the state. But you could tell they were having an amazing time. On June 1st, they decided to leave Orlando to go to Tampa to visit one last amusement park because they had told Hal they would be returning on June 3rd. June 3rd would come and go, and Joe and the girls didn't return home. But Hal wouldn't panic. He just assumed they stayed a few extra days. But by June 6th, still with no contact from Joe or his daughters, Hal would go to the police and report them missing. Two days later, everything would change when the hotel maid would go clean room 251. As soon as she entered, she found it super clean the same way she left it about a week ago. So she went and told the hotel manager. He found it very strange, so he called the Tampa police. When the Tampa police arrived at the hotel, they discovered that room 251 was registered to missing people, Joan, Michelle, and Christy. The hotel manager told the police they checked in on June 1st, but haven't been seen ever since. The police searched the room and would find their camera, and on the film, the last two pictures were actually taken at that room. One was of Michelle, and one was just looking outside the hotel. So the police searched around the hotel for their car or any clue, and they would find their car one mile away. On the car floor, they would find two brochures, one brochure had Joe's handwriting in it, and it was directions to the boat ramp where the car was actually found. The other brochure had this strange handwriting, we don't know whose handwriting that was. 
and it was directions to the hotel they were staying at. The police focused on the brochure written in Joe's handwriting, and on it, it said blue and white. And what would be blue and white at a boat ramp? Boats. And then they would make a terrible discovery. Four days earlier, the Coast Guard would find three bodies out in the bay about 25 miles away from Joe's car. But they didn't put two and two together because no one knew these women were missing. Anyway, it would take the police three years to solve the case, but they did. This is what took place. On the morning of June 1st, they would leave Orlando and drive to Tampa, but they couldn't find their hotel. So Joe would pull over to the side and pull out her brochure, trying to figure out, where's this hotel? A man would approach them. Hey, are you guys lost? Joe would reply, yes, we are. Can you please help us? He said, what are you trying to look for? She told him this hotel. He said, oh, that's easy. Give me that brochure. I'll write the directions on there for you. Joe thanked him and thought he was really a nice guy. This man would say something real crazy now. He would say, hey, would you guys want to come out on my boat later on today to watch the sunset? Joe and the girls really didn't have money for anything. And to go on a boat ride, that was just amazing. They said, of course we would. He said, here, write down the directions. Joe would write down the directions and he would say, remember, the boat is blue and white. Joe would write blue and white. Joe would tell him, see you later, alligator. Around 8.30 that evening, or 9 p.m., no one really knows, they would arrive at that boat ramp, and they would see the boat. He would wave to them, hey guys, come on up, come on up. They would get on the boat, and he would take them out on the bay, and he would assault all three of them. And then he would tie them up, and duct tape their mouth but leave their eyes open because he really wanted them to see what was going to happen next he would now go get three cinder blocks 30 pounds each and tie a noose around each one's neck and tie that noose to a cinder block then take each one one by one and throw them overboard he wanted each one to see the other die. After he killed all three, he would take his boat and turn it around and just go on like nothing happened. Three days later, on June 4th, the Coast Guard would find three bodies, but they weren't able to ID them because of the severe decomposition, because of the warm water. But when they did an autopsy, they would find water in their lungs, meaning they were thrown alive. The police would identify these victims through their dental records. Poor Hal, his whole family were killed. Can you guys imagine something like that ever happening to you? The man who killed these three women was a suspected serial killer, Opa Champ. He loved to brag about his date with three women. And in 1994, he would be sentenced to death. He would stay on death row for about two decades, a little over, without a single visit. No one wanted to see him. On November 17, 2011, at 4.08 p.m., Hal Rogers would watch the man that killed his whole family be executed. I'm Ahmed Basioni and I wanted to thank you guys for watching today's video. God bless you. I owe you guys one. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm out of this joint.